Okie doke, it's 6.30, so we'll go ahead and get started. For our prayer concerns, uh, Mary Lou talked to LaRue today, and she said that she was sounded really good, but she is having a scan done on Friday uh, before her chemo to see if the cancer is uh, growing or reducing or what, so uh, Pete, she asked us to please be in prayer for her. Miss Maxine Rogers Bird has been transferred out of the CCU, uh, but continue to remember her. She's still got a ways to go uh, with that. Um, Harvey Bishop's heart cath went well. Uh, I told him I'm glad they found that he did have a heart. So, <laughs> Of course, I said the same thing about me when I had mine five or six years ago, too. <laughs> um, a friend, uh, a co-worker of Tim Davis and Paul Medlin, Dar Danny Druitt, had a chainsaw accident yesterday and had surgery today uh, at Duke Hospital and, of course, will be out of work uh, until he heals. So be in prayer, be in prayer for he and his family uh, concerning that. Um, are there others that y'all are aware of? Yeah, is he? Yeah, yeah. Good, okay. Most of us were here when Teresa uh, tripped on the rug there and fell. I'm glad it wasn't worse than it is. There, at least there was no blood or fractures. So, uh, but Doopy and Prairie's just uh, Jimmy was taking her to urgent care right now. Yours and Derry's brother-in-law passed away in Roxburgh. His sister passed away in Roxburgh. Okay. All righty. Well, let's join together in prayer. And I'm not trying to be unsociable to this group, but I have to be able to see the screen as well to make sure Philip and I are on the same page. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together. And I pray, Lord, that you might be with each of these that we have mentioned tonight, as well as so many others who have concerns that may be unspoken or we may have just simply forgotten to mention. I pray, Lord, that you would have your hand upon each one of them. Those who need healing, we pray for that. Those who might be facing continued treatments, we pray for strength for them. And Lord, we just pray your hand on each of them in such a way that they know you're with them and they feel your peace and your comfort. Be with us tonight as we look at the theme, thank you, Lord, because indeed we have much to be thankful for. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just a couple of things. Remember, this Friday they'll be coming in to use our kitchen for the Air Civil Patrol or Civil Air Patrol uh, to make meals. They're not going to serve here, but they'll make meals and take them to where the people are being trained. We've got one problem. When we didn't have our uh, picnic like we had planned, over half of our freezer is full. And we really need to get that emptied out. So there's buns and things of burgers. Uh, if you've got some room in your freezer, if you wouldn't mind to take home with you, just be sure and bring it back whenever we do have our picnic. Uh, I wish I had enough room in my freezer for those, uh, ga uh, those big gallons of ice cream, but I don't, so <laughs> I can't take them. But uh, we do need uh, to be able to get that cleaned out for them so that they can use it because they asked us about it last fall. Um, also, we sent out an email, and I don't remember, is it Friday that we do the parking lot? Did anybody see that email that Mary Lou sent out? Or, huh? Tomorrow and Friday will be, yeah, well, tomorrow and Friday will be this half of the, uh, out here. So uh, those of you in the prayer group may want, I mean, exercise may just want to come and uh, pull up into the undercover here and uh, then just to have to back out from there. And then uh, on Monday, the other half of the parking lot will be sealed and striped as well as the small parking lot on this side. 
So uh, please, I hope, hopefully, and I'm sure they will have cones, but not the cones, but some <laughs> actual cones. <laughs> my, my, my shook his head when I said that. <laughs> uh, but if not, you will be able to see where they're doing that. And uh, this side, they'll be working Thursday and Friday. It'll be available on Sunday. That's the reason they're doing it the way they are. And then the same, uh, the other two areas will be available next Wednesday. So uh, Jan has worked with them to make sure that uh, we don't have to worry about parking for our services. It may just be... We've already talked with them, and uh, on Friday they'll park over here and pull into the, and then just back out, and then on Monday they'll have to park over here. So, but yeah, yeah, we we've talked with them, and to be honest, both ways they'll be able to get under the shelter to load whatever they need to load. They just have to back out, either back in or back out. Have no earthly idea. I knew which I knew who you meant. Well, they are coming probably mid morning. I'm not sure where they're coming from, but they'll actually just be the lady and her husband who are doing most of the cook and preparation. They're actually going to uh, sleep over in the youth house. Uh, that's one reason it's being used. They'll also be doing some devotionals over there. So uh, I think it's a great ministry, and I think it's great that we are allowing them to use our facilities. To me, that's the kind of things we need to be uh, hosting and let happen. All righty. The uh, title of the song this week is Thank You, Lord. However, the one that I was asked to look into, I love the words, but I don't like the beat. Partly because it's country and partly because it's got a I don't know what kind of beat. I said almost a rap beat. But the words are great. And if you like country music, you probably will like it. That's the one by Chris Tomlin. But what I did end up finding is that there are at least four others that have a similar name. Either Thank You, Lord, uh, Thank thank You, uh, and I forget the last, We Want to Thank You, I think is the last one that will... So what I'm doing differently tonight is rather than giving background and history of these hymns, because uh, none of them are very old, uh, all of them are less than 25 years old, yeah, no, 26 years old, so uh, I, I did have some stories, but I decided to go a different route. One of the things I decided to do was just to look at Scripture first of all, and some of the Scriptures that tell us to thank God. Psalms 106.1 says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures. And Psalms 86.12 says, I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will glorify your name forever. Psalms 136.1, and really the entire Psalm 136 is a thanksgiving and praise uh, psalm, so you probably would like to read the whole thing. But the first verse says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love, his love endures forever. That seems to be a theme of most of the passages. Uh, there were about 190 uh, in my search just for give thanks. I didn't do praise or I didn't do thanksgiving uh, or just the word thanks. So uh, there are a lot more than just these. But uh, the second verse of 136, give thanks to the Lord, of, to the God of gods, his love endures forever. Verses three and four, give thanks to the Lord of lords, to him alone does, to him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. And then to the sixth verse of 136, give thanks to the one who shaped the earth on the water. God's faithful love lasts forever. And then... Uh, verse 14 of that same psalm, give thanks for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So that psalm really touches on a lot of different way, things that we should give thanks to God for. And verse 26 goes back to the words that we've seen several places. Give thanks to the God of heaven 
for his steadfast love endures forever. The first verse of uh, 105 says, Give thanks to the Lord. And then uh, verses 1 and 2 of that one, if I can read this small print. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Say, say to him, sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his steadfast and wonderful deeds. <clears throat> and then the, and you'll find that like 105, 106, 107, 108, 109 Psalms all have this same theme. In fact, a lot of them do. Even when he has some laments, he will eventually uh, give thanks to God. But the 107th says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Do you think the psalmist wanted us to remember that his love endures? Because there are times when we probably don't think it does, don't we? do we? Psalms 108, 3 and 4 says, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. This verse both spoke and convict, convicted me. How often do we really proclaim and give thanks to God in front of other people? And then this next uh, verse, 138, verses 1 through 3, and I'm not sure what this translation is, but I, I really liked it. It's, very, it's a very modern one for sure. Thank you. Every, everything in me says thank you. Angels, listen as I sing my thanks. I kneel in worship facing your holy temple and say it again, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. Most holy is your word. The moment I called out, you stepped in. You made my life large with strength. And just a, just a few more of these and then I'll skip on to the Psalms. 2 Samuel 22:50 says, Therefore I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises to your name. Again, that same thing. 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures. 1 Chronicles 29, 13. Now our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. And Jeremiah 33, 11 says, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever and then this next one is the first five verses of Isaiah and I'll be honest I cannot read uh, the first first two verses there uh, but I'll read verses four and five because I can see them and you will say in that day give thanks to the Lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the people proclaim that his name is exalted sing praises to the Lord for he has done glorious, gloriously, let this be made known in all the earth. And there are so many more passages, but the reason I read them, and many of them are repeating, because I think sometimes we forget. We only focus on what's wrong instead of focusing on God and what's good about him. And so, uh, as I said, I, I came up with five songs uh, about thanking the Lord and I can't think of a better thing that we can do what I'm going to do is read through the words of each of these and then we'll conclude with some questions Thank You Lord by Tim uh, Chris Tomlinson is only a couple of years old it was first put out in 2020 it says thank you Lord for small th the small things like me and her on a porch swing for summer nights and fireflies and the sound of my old six string. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. If I still got breath in these lungs, that's all I need to get down on my knees and be thankful for all that he has done. This one really talks about the small things. Like I said, I, I, I really love the uh, lyrics. I'm just not crazy about the music, but that's me. Uh, younger folks do like the music and it may be something that we need to consider. His chorus, uh, which is repeated two or three times in the song, and he's continuing to give thanks 
for my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on this old dirt floor, for my babies, for my girl, for the way they changed my world. Waking up today, yeah, I just got to say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, I just want to say, thank you, Lord. And I truly like those where we, do we got to do something or do we want to do something? I think we have to praise God because it's just uh, he wants us to, but we ought to want to praise God as well, shouldn't we? And so I really like that little phrase in there. And then he goes on to say, thank you for the hard times, for lighting the way in the dark times, for pulling me in, for giving again the times that I took it too far. I got to thank you for keeping me humble, for picking me up when I stumble. And although I change, you stay the same. And I don't say thank you enough. Do we give him thanks in the hard times? For the times that he forgives us over and over again? Do we give him thanks when he causes us to be humbled by something? That's a hard one. He picks us up when we stumble. But the last line there, or the, well, the second to last line, we change, but he stays the same. And the last line, and I don't say thank you enough. And I think all of us could say that. And then he repeats uh, the chorus, which I'm not going to read again. Uh, but then it, uh, the second part of a chorus, praise up, eyes closed, one thing I know, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise up, eyes closed, one thing I know, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so uh, these words are a reminder to us. If you would like to go on uh, YouTube and find this, it is Thank You, Lord, by Chris Tomlin. Uh, it'll also, the one that I came up with or found was also, who's a country singer whose last name is Rhett? Okay, he and, is it Georgia, Florida line? they along with Chris Tomlin re sing this song together. So uh, obviously y'all know country music, you can see I don't. Uh, and you'd think being from Tennessee, I'd be an old country boy. I am a country boy, I just don't like country music. I'm a rock and roller. <laughs> no, not much, I've been to Dollywood. But the second song that I wanna read the words from is Thank You Lord by Don Moen. It first, was sung publicly in 2004, but it was actually written back in 1978 by a young man who was in seminary, and he began to lose his sight. It was a degenerative type of thing that caused him to become legally blind. And he was really struggling with that as well as uh, how hard seminary was being because of that. And so he wrote it, but it sat on a shelf for a long time. But I'm glad that Don Moen brought it to life for us. I come before you today, and there's just one thing I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. When we go to him in prayer, sometimes that ought to be the only thing we want to say, is just thank you. For all you've given to me, for all the blessings that I cannot see, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he does bless us in ways that we don't even see or understand, doesn't he? With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that's part of a chorus that repeats itself. For all you've done in my life, you took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then the next slide is basically a repetition of what we uh, have already seen. Uh, and then the following slide repeats part of it, except it changes it from uh, one person, the personal I, to we and your. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Lift your voice. Thank you, Lord. All you've done in our lives, we just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And then the next slide again uh, repeats as well as the following slide. And I'm not going to read through all of those uh, for you tonight, but you get the gist of this song. It actually is about five minutes long. You can also find it on YouTube. 
uh, Thank You, Lord, by Don Moen. And then the next song, I had no idea that it came out in 1996, but it actually was the one I was thinking of when uh, the person brought to me the song, Thank You, Lord. Uh, but I, I like it a lot. For all that you have done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do, for all that you've promised and all that you are, is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I just thank you. We thank him not only for what he's done, what he's doing, but also what he's going to do. That he's going to keep his promises as we have talked about on a number of occasions. And then to the next slide, Philip. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gracefully thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. Now I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gracefully thank you. And then the fourth song is Thank You, also by Hillsong. And it took me a while to decipher that they were different. This one came out, uh, what, 17 years later than the first in 2013. Two of the members of the Hillsong worship team, uh, Matt Crocker and Hannah Hobbs, are the ones that uh, put this song together. Uh, it really began with an idea that the worship pastor had uh, placed in their hearts about having a service revolving about Thanksgiving. And they began, though, this exact phrase is not actually found in the song. Uh, but thank you, Jesus, you set me free. Christ, my Savior, you rescued me. But it's uh, certainly a part of the song. I may take a little bit longer with this one. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid. We can always give thanks to God for these things, even when we're in tough times, can't we? For the price that he paid. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for an ending grace. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for this life you gave. Of course, we know our salvation is based on that unending grace that he has given to us. And because of that salvation and that grace, we have a hope that is not found in the world, but is found through Jesus Christ because he gave his life for each one of us. And then, uh, go ahead, two slides. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, God. All my hope is in you, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your favor. And thank you for your love and everything you've done for me. We know promises that God has made to us that he has kept. There may be some promises that we have read in scripture that have not yet been fulfilled, but I truly believe that he will keep that. He is true, we are fortunate we have received his favor or his blessings untold. We are fortunate to live in this country where we have the freedom to worship or not where we, for the most part, have what we need in life to be able to uh, have a, a, a good and decent life. Uh, and then uh, the next slide, he repeats, there's no one like you. And then it says, to your name, we give all the glory. To your name, we give all the praise. And certainly we should do that, shouldn't we? Why? And then it goes on to say, you're alive. Our God everlasting, so let your face shine on us. There is no one like you, no one like you. And all my hope is in you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God was, is, and is to come. And I'm thankful for that. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'll be using that verse along with some of the others that we looked at tonight. Uh, in the message on Sunday. And then, again, it repeats the to your name we give all the glory. You're alive, our everlasting Father, so let your face shine on us. That's a reflection to me of 
Second uh, Chronicles 7.14. May your face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. I don't know whether that was inspiration, but it certainly could have been. And then the final song that we'll skip to is We Thank You, Lord, by Susan Peterson. She had been going through a very rough time in her life, uh, and I just happened to find this uh, in the pictures that I was looking through, and so I didn't try to divide it up, and it may be too small to read, but I'll try to read it for you because of all the five songs, to me, this one has the most powerful message of all. We thank you, Lord, and worship you with gladness. Do we come into his presence with thanksgiving? Do we come in worship with praise and gladness? We praise your name and lift our hearts in song. Does that say anything about making a beautiful sound? It says we simply lift up our hearts and songs to God. For you, God, are, are good. Your love endures forever. Now that's directly from many of those passages that uh, I read a few moments ago. God indeed is good, and his love is always enduring. Your faithfulness continues all day long. Uh, we sing a hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is based on a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament, that morning by morning new mercies I see. Great is your faithfulness unto me. You've lavished us with every spiritual blessing. It says spiritual blessing, and I kind of like that. We're not blessed with everything that we want in the world, are we? But we are blessed with every spiritual need that we uh, call upon him for. And so we thank you, Lord, and praise you now in song. We thank you, Lord, for everyday provisions, for daily food, for clothes and shelter too, for health and strength and grace for every trial, for this free land where we can worship you. You crown each day with your abundant goodness. We thank you, Lord, and lift our praise to you. I wonder how many of these things we take for granted. I'm guessing, if you're like me, probably a lot of them. We all took for granted just going to the gas station and filling up until the gas prices began to go up. But even now, we can say we're thankful that God makes provision for us to be able to get where we want or need to be. And that, to me, is one of his provisions for us. You know, he, he gives us grace and strength for every trial we face. As I said a moment ago, we're free to worship if we want or not. And he crowns each day with his abundant goodness. We just have to look and see it. And then the third verse, we thank you, Lord, for giving us salvation you sent your son that we might be forgiven. Far as east is from west, our sins have vanished. Now justified, we're citizens of heaven. You sealed us with your promised Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for love so freely given. This song certainly has taken a number of different verses of Scripture and brought them together. Uh, you know, because we are justified, we are now citizens of heaven. And we have received and been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And in the final verse, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the Bible to guide our steps, if we'll but hear and read. And for your church, a worldwide living body that gives sweet fellowship and meets our need. We are encouraged and we worship gladly. We thank you, Lord. You've made us rich indeed. Aren't you glad we have God's word? so he can guide us. But we have to read it and hear it, don't we? Are we thankful for the church? Do we give thanksgiving for our church? I would venture to guess that most, if not all of you do. But there are also a number of people that are constantly saying, what's wrong with our church or any church? And they'll describe a litany of things. Well, I believe that we can see and experience what we want to see and experience. If we want to see the bad and experience the bad, then yeah, we're going to see that. But if we want to see the good that God is doing in his church and we want to experience it, then we need to look for that. And I believe that we will see it and we will get the opportunity of experiencing it. 
I have not listened to this song. I'm sure that it probably is on YouTube as well, but I, I love the words. I think it covers the whole gamut of what we need to be thankful for. And now we're going to go into a time where I'm going to ask you a few questions. I hope you'll respond. But the first picture I have here, I am thankful for your blessings, Lord. Are we? What reasons do we have to thank the Lord? Good health. A lot of people don't enjoy that, do they? Huh? Each breath, and that was covered in the first song that I looked. As long as I have breath in my lungs, I can bend down on my knee. I really have studied these songs, whether y'all believe it or not. <laughs> what other reasons do we have to thank God? You got to talk loud. Salvation. Salvation. And that was mentioned in almost every one of these five songs. His steadfast love. What, is, what does steadfast mean? Forever, unending, never changing, that his love is there no matter what we do. And one of the songs also said that, that while we change, God remains the same in his love. It is uh, the last song in the second verse talked about our freedom. But what I believe that we need to remember is freedom is not a privilege, it's a responsibility. And too many people only want the freedom as a privilege. But as I said Sunday, we as Christians need to still, uh, step up and live the responsible life that God has called us to live. We have been set free. We've been set free in Christ. But we have been set free to be his children and to listen to him and to his will. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sins and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. How often do we really think about what Jesus did on the cross besides at Easter? I don't know about you, but it's something I sometimes take for granted. But it should never be anything that we take for granted. It should be something that we thank God for every day because without it, we wouldn't have salvation. We'd have to be perfect. And as I look around, no offense, but ain't none of us perfect. We all would fall short. And so it's only through Jesus. So how often do we give thanks about what Jesus did for us? Or how often do we give thanks to God for the weather and the animals that he has given? Yes, it's been a hot day, but it was a beautiful day, wasn't it? Most of us enjoyed it because we were able to stay in the air conditioning. At lunch, I ran into the birds, and then they came over here to do the yard. And when Gary Sr. walked in, I said, man, you look like you've been working because he was just drenched in sweat. They don't work inside, they work outside. But rather than complain, they just simply go on. And that's the way that we ought to be, whether we're inside or outside, uh, whatever the weather might be. Because we need the, the sun and we need the rain. We need the hot and we need the cold. But also, do we give thanks for the animals, for the birds of the air? When you're in the woods or in the mountains, do you ever hear birds singing or maybe just in your backyard? Have you ever wondered what they're saying? Whatever it is, it's usually beautiful. There are a few birds that sound pretty awful, I'll admit, but most of them have a beautiful sound. Uh, 
and most of them are, are beautiful. At least the male birds are beautiful. Well, you know, and I'm not being ugly, I'm being facetious. The male birds usually have the colors and the female birds do not for protection. So while they're taking care of their, their babies. But, you know, each day we need to think about these simple things that we can give thanks for. Thank you, Lord. What other reasons do we have to say thank you? We've had a little more time to think. Are there any other reasons you would say thank you to God? Our families. Because unfortunately, there are a lot of folks that don't have family. Our friends, our church family. You know, because unfortunately, I've done some uh, funerals when Huey has asked me to do when they didn't have a church family. And a lot of times it's really sad that there may be two or three people there. I did one when I was in Salisbury and literally the only person there was her son. It was at the graveside. We didn't do a, a service, but I didn't know her. But I was, she, he and I were the only two that were there that day. Yeah, I don't care if people come to my funeral, but if they do, I want it to be a celebration. Hopefully I've lived a decent life and lived a life worth celebrating but if nothing else, to celebrate the life that Christ gave to me through his blood on the cross of Calvary. Uh, and so I can assure you, my casket or my urn, whichever I talk Trish into letting me do, do, will not be present at my celebration of life. Because I don't want that to be the focus. I want the focus to be on God. And then I found this picture that I really liked that was covered in some of our verses, covered in some of the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Boy, where would we be without that grace? Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We'd be in trouble if he was not a merciful God, wouldn't we? Thank you for your forgiveness. That shouldn't be just something we thank him for every once in a while. That should be something that we're thankful for every day. Thank you for your protection. That goes part to what Brenda was saying a few moments ago, but that he takes care of us. Thank you for your guidance. And sometimes we don't like to thank him for that guidance because we want to do it our way rather than his way. But what I found that he, almost, not almost, invariably he's right and I'm wrong when we don't agree on something. I don't know about you. Thank you for your friendship. First sermon I ever preached, and I don't think it was really very good, uh, but it's a passage in John where Jesus said to his disciples, I no longer call you my disciples, I call you my friends. That we not only become God's children, we become his friends. How often have we heard someone say, well, my mom or my, da my dad is my best friend. Well, God is our best friend, isn't he? For your peace. I don't know how many times I've said it over my 30-something years of ministry. But thank God for his peace, which passes all understanding. It can't be explained. And yet in the midst of the hardships, in the midst of the difficulties, he can grant to us that peace that we can't explain. Has anybody ever asked you, how are you able to handle this? I have. Because of his peace. It's his, not mine. For his unfailing love, thank you. And the, the psalmist certainly emphasized that, didn't he? And thank you for being my savior. I don't know how, where we would be without him. And then I've got another, uh, a little prayer that I found that I'd like to read to you. Thank you, dear Lord, I woke up alive. I have my health, a roof over my head, food to eat, water to drink, people to love, and people who love me. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that I take for granted on a daily basis. Isn't that a simplistic yet beautiful prayer? Not simplistic, simple, I guess I should say. From that, I ask the question, how often 
should we say thanks to God? You know, and, and, and Paul said, pray without ceasing. I think he's saying also, give thanks without ceasing. That oftentimes we let other things get in the way, don't we? Our mood, other people, other things. Instead of saying thanks to God, we see the problem, the difficulty. Which leads to the next question I have for you and for myself. Are you able to thank God in the hard times and for the hard times in your life? I love the saying here, no matter what I go through, thank you for always being by my side. We forget that sometimes, don't we? When we're in the midst of the hard times. But when Jesus talked about that yoke in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, or verses 27 and 28, that yoke was not made for one animal, it was made for two. That two animals work together. And what Jesus was saying, when you take my yoke that I am bearing and you bear it with me, I will make your burden light and your load light. And even though we're facing those burdens and those difficulties, aren't you glad we don't have to bear them alone? And this, this next picture I just use because I love the picture. I smile because I have survived everything the world has thrown at me. I smile because when I was knocked down, I got back up. Yeah. God gives us the ability to survive. The question is, can we smile and give him the credit for the things in which he has brought us through? Because a lot of times we want to be delivered from that valley. But it's only in that valley where we learn what God wants us to know. And when do we grow? In easy times or in hard times? I still to this day say I wasn't a great baseball player, but the reason I was able to play as long as I did is because I worked at it. And my dad made me work at it. Oftentimes on an afternoon after he'd been in the field all day, he would come in and he would throw me 100 pitches to swing. Used to be in our front, at first it was in our front yard, but then I began to lose all the baseball, so we had to uh, move to the park each day. Uh, but there were days when I didn't want to do it, but days I was thankful because I had. Uh, someone posted something today on Facebook about Faith Thornberry. I think it was his un he was his uncle and he was remembering him today. Faith Thornberry may not mean an, a thing to any of you, but he played Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees. And when I was five or six years old, my dad got him to come to our baseball park because he lived in our community. He and my dad were hunting buddies. Uh, they ran dogs together. And Faye spent about two hours teaching me how to bunt. How to regular bunt, how to drag bunt, how to push bunt. And I get frustrated sometimes when I watch these players today because they can't bunt. I've seen maybe two or three in all these uh, tournament games that I've watched who've been able to bunt. But I knew how to do it, but every practice that we had not only when my dad was coaching growing up, but when we moved on to high school. The first thing we had to do every practice before we got to swing a bat, when we stepped in the batter's box, we had to bunt 10 down the uh, third baseline and 10 down the first baseline. So every one of us learned how to bunt. Not because we just magically did it, but because we worked at it. And, you know, I would not have become as good a bunter as I was. If my eyesight was a little better, I still think I could step up there and bunt. Uh, but I hadn't practiced in a long time. But these hard times and the times we spend can really make us a better person if we will allow them to do so. But I'm going to make it a little bit closer to home. What blessings has God bestowed on you today? And if he's bestowed a blessing on you, did, he, did you tell him thanks? 
Wouldn't that be fun to curl up a, under a big old tree and have a dog laying in our lap right beside a creek? But there are blessings untold. We just have to look for them and make sure we give thanks. And we've talked about it, so I'm just going to uh, glance over it. When was the last time that we thanked him for the grace that he has shown to us? Because sometimes we just need to pause from our lives, from our busyness, and say, thank you, Lord. That's what the psalmist did over and over and over again, wasn't it? I shout for joy. I thank you, Lord. Your plan stands firm forevermore. How thankful are we? Would you join with me as we look at the next slide and say with me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Next Wednesday night, we'll be looking at God's faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, any questions or comments about tonight? Like I say, I knew it was going to be different, but I decided that I wanted to use a lot more scripture tonight. Uh, and those scriptures, majority came from the Old Testament, but there are others in the New Testament as well. I just did a quick search on them over the last few days. I also printed a bunch of uh, quotes about thankfulness, and I forgot to look at them as I was getting ready tonight. So, anyway. Anything else? All righty. We will do a little bit more background next week when we look at the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. All righty. Let's join together by gathering in a circle, holding hands, if you're comfortable with that. <laughs> do I need to help both of y'all? <laughs> that's, that's why I sit in that high chair, because I can <laughs> get up easier. <laughs> We may have to skip over the top of this table. <laughs> Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for the food that you've provided for us. Thank you for this cool place in which we can meet together and look at your word and look at songs that you have inspired people to sing. Lord, help us. Go with a thankful heart because of who you are and because of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.